One's first driving lesson is always exciting. Sometimes students end up in nerve-wracking and even extreme situations. This once happened to 18-year-old Irene when she left for her first lesson with her mother. We all know how learning to drive with a parent can be quite nerve-wracking, but Irene didn't complain about it. She made her way through the streets of Catania, Sicily, until they were suddenly covered with a thick layer of black ash. The crunch under the wheels would probably be soothing under other circumstances. Or not. Nevertheless, the girl handled the test the best she could. But then something began hitting the hood and roof. These turned out to be pieces of lava from a huge crimson cloud above the city. Irene, like all the inhabitants of Catania, survived the eruption of Mount Etna at the beginning of 2021. As if the coronavirus pandemic wasn't enough for people. Then 12 eruptions occurred in a matter of three weeks. Etna went non-stop until it had thrown out almost 1.5 billion cubic feet, 40 million cubic meters, of rock. A volcanic eruption is a frightening and dangerous event. Typically, we all first think about the destructive threat of such things for people. But in one regard or another, volcanic eruptions are never something that can simply be ignored. Have you ever wondered which eruption was the most powerful? Let's temporarily ignore the mega volcanoes from millions of years ago. Back in the early days, the Earth was pretty much one continuous volcano. But now, let's get to the eruptions. One of the most famous cataclysms caused by a volcano was the year without summer. The famous novelist Mary Shelley wrote about this one. And while she complained about the cool air and rains, snow fell in the US in the middle of summer. The culprit was the Tambora volcano on Sumatra Island in Indonesia. On April 10, 1815, it erupted and was active until mid-July. Scientists estimate that the volcano threw out 58 trillion tons of ash, and possibly up to 120 million tons of sulfur. This led to the fact that sunlight could not break through the resulting layer of material, and the temperature dropped catastrophically. In June, snow began falling in New York and Maine. After about three months of volcanic winter, most of the crops in North America had died. And in June, about 12 inches of snow already covered the ground near Quebec. The eruption of the Tambora volcano was certainly an extremely strong and destructive one. Compared to this monster, Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed Pompeii, was small fish. Volcanoes have their own league, in fact, with specific criteria and requirements. It's the Volcanic Explosivity Index. In order to earn the title of supervolcano there, one has to earn the highest score, an 8. Vesuvius only has a 5. At this level, there are volcanoes that have ejected more than 1.3 billion cubic yards of materials in one eruption. This is quite impressive, but very far from Tambor's eruption. This giant has earned 7 points on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. Its volume of emissions was about 150 to 180 times more. But the title of a supervolcano is awarded for significantly greater achievements, namely, for volumes of more than 240 cubic miles of material as a result of one eruption. Scientists have found traces of only nine such monsters. Five of them were active millions and even tens of millions of years ago. The famous Yellowstone Caldera was included in the list of supervolcanoes for its eruption around 630,000 BC. Two record holders once shook New Zealand. 254,000 years ago, it was the Wakamaru volcano and then 26,500 years ago, it was Topo Volcano. Regarding the second, it was the strongest eruption in the world over the past 70,000 years. The material it spat out is equivalent to over 127 cubic miles, 530 kilometers, of magma. But even that is nothing compared to the largest known eruption in the history of our planet. And this is the explosion of the Toba Volcano. This Indonesian monster had been preparing its strike for many thousands of years. It drew strength from a powerful volcanic system. There have already been eruptions around 840,000 and 700,000 BC. This formed a caldera system measuring 18 miles by 60 miles. When we think of volcanoes, we most often think of a freestanding mountain. Its top explodes, scattering burning stones around and flooding everything around with lava. But this is only one type. Generally speaking, volcanoes are divided into the four following types. Cinder cones, compound volcanoes, shield volcanoes, and lava domes. 
The latter type is produced when highly viscous magma accumulates below the surface. Its pressure lifts the Earth up in the resulting dome shape. In fact, the most powerful eruption that came from Toba originated from a caldera complex with several lava domes. And yes, it was 74,000 BC. Listening to the stories of witnesses that saw this catastrophe is obviously not all that easy. We'll come back to the issue of Toba's influence on mankind in a bit. Careful studies of this eruption's aftermath provide rather comprehensive information about it. And believe me, this data is definitely more accurate than whatever stories frightened villagers might have told. Scientists dug into the volcanic ash deposits, studied the caldera and other evidence of the eruption. Their findings suggest that Toba then ejected approximately 672 cubic miles, 2,800 cubic kilometers, of material. And to earn the title of supervolcano, you need to cross the line of about 240 cubic miles, 1,000 cubic kilometers. So Toba is over twice a supervolcano. It destroyed life over an area of 7,700 square miles, covering everything with a layer of ash 2,000 feet thick. Part of Malaysia was under 30-foot rubble. Even in the middle of India, the layer of ash reached 20 feet. Overall, the whole of South Asia was covered by at least 6 inches of ashfall. If the volcano were in the United States, then the ash from it would cover half the country. Only Alaska and Hawaii would remain untouched. Although, these areas could have also felt the influence of Toba, just like the rest of the whole world. Scientists have found evidence that the eruption of an Indonesian volcano could have affected the climate. The point here is that such a monster cannot just stop, especially in such a seismically active place like Indonesia. This same volcanic caldera erupted again and again between 15,000 and 20,000 BC. It took thousands of years to recover because the pressure of the magma weakened at one point. Then the overall landscape changed. It's believed that Toba could have caused global climate change and perhaps even pushed the Earth into an ice age. During an eruption, the volcano not only spits out hot rock and scatters tons of ash, many harmful substances are also released into the atmosphere. The most nasty of these is, perhaps, carbon and sulfur. A large volume of it can move to form a layer in the atmosphere through which the sun's rays won't pass. And this is a key factor in creating a volcanic winter. Tambora caused the year without a summer pestilence, the catastrophic destruction of crops, and the deaths of thousands. It's known that the eruption of the Philippine volcano Pinatubo back in 1991 led to a drop in temperature by 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the entire planet. And its explosive index was only 6, by the way. Therefore, the idea that Toba could contribute to the beginning of the Ice Age is not illogical. Moreover, about 1,000 years after its eruption, a serious cooling period followed. But still, most scientists consider this possibility a controversial topic. Climate researchers claim that the cooling began before the eruption of Toba, although it could have added to the issue. Scientists have a sort of standard for determining climate change. This is Lake Malawi in East Africa. It just so happens that sediment samples from its bottom store extremely accurate information regarding the past, including temperature changes. The data obtained from lake samples have a solid reputation, as these things go. In the case of Toba, analysis of sediments from Malawi doesn't exactly confirm the involvement of the volcano in the temperature drop on Earth. Also, people who lived on the planet at that time testify against this as well. No, it wasn't exactly some formal interview, like with Irene from Catania. And yes, 74,000 years BC, there were people that lived on Earth, Homo sapiens to be specific. Initially, scientists believed that the Toba eruption nearly wiped out our species. But by this time, it had already settled in the territories of modern Asia and European countries. It's clear that ancient people did not die from the direct impact of volcanic ash and lava, like what happened in Pompeii. Some scientists are of the opinion that the eruption of Toba still caused great harm to nature. Due to the cold and acid rain, both plants and animals died out. And this meant that Homo sapiens now had reduced food sources and they didn't really have much then in the way of jackets, thermal underwear, and trekking shoes. So it was difficult and dangerous for them to protect themselves from the cold and still move around in search of food. Different researchers have their own opinion regarding the survival situation our ancestors faced at that time. A small group of scientists suggested a theory regarding the Toba catastrophe. It was assumed that after the eruption, anywhere from three to 10,000 people survived. 
Some researchers have stated some other crazy figures, like of several hundred, or even as little as 80 survivors. But modern findings suggest that the Toba disaster theory is nothing more than a good script for a Hollywood movie. First off, back in 2018, traces of life lived by a large group of people were found in southern Africa. And it hardly seems that they were barely surviving, but rather thriving in fact. The African Homo sapiens group had a sustenance-rich sea nearby. It may also have been damaged by the Toba eruption, but not enough to necessarily provoke famine and disaster. Following this discovery, a new one soon appeared. This one concerns people living in India, which is much closer to Toba. And these representatives of humanity also lived well. This is evidenced by the stone tools uncovered. Moreover, archaeologists found them both under a layer of ash from Toba and above it too. For the hardline skeptics, scientists have offered an even more impressive find fossil teeth of a Homo sapiens found in a cave on the island of Sumatra. In other words, in the same area as Toba. Naturally, no one claims that people survived there directly during the eruption, but this indicates that there must have been much more than a few thousand left, although who knows. In the movie 2012, people were driving cars while the tectonic plates were literally falling apart. There is now a beautiful lake in the collapsed caldera of the terrifying megavolcano. It's also called Toba and it keeps a very terrible secret. Samosir Island in the center of the lake is slowly but steadily rising above the water. And this is evidence that Toba is not sleeping, but instead readying itself for new activity. Don't worry though, neither we nor the next generations will be threatened by volcanic winter. At least, we shouldn't be.